Welcome to everyone attending the CECOM Agile Conference. I'm really excited to be here and to talk about one of my favorite topics, how value stream management supercharges your teams. And before we go into the presentation, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of background on myself. My name is Richard Naster, and I'm the Chief Scientist of Value Stream Management at Digital AI. I have about 30 years of experience in IT and software development. And some of the roles that I've held are developer to various executive level positions, such as CIO, CTO, and VP of development. Prior to joining Digital AI, I was a SAFE fellow, SPCT, and a methodologist at Scaled Agile. That's where I learned a lot of my thinking about value streams. Prior to Scaled Agile, I was the Chief Agile Methodologist at IBM. And down below are some of the publications that I've created over the years. One of the things is Safe Distilled Book Series. I've written about five books on Safe, and I just recently published a ebook on value stream management for the digital age. But enough about me, let's get to the more interesting stuff here. So I want to talk about first to give some context for this discussion. The state of global transformation, uh, a study was done by IDC. And their prediction is that global spending on digital transformation will reach a whopping $6.8 trillion globally by 2023. That is a lot of investment in digital transformation. However, the Boston Consulting Group says that 70% of digital transformations fall short of their objectives, often with profound consequences. And some of those consequences are companies who are no longer in business, who are a former shadow of themselves. So the next question you need to ask yourself is why do most transformations fail? And from what I've observed is that silos are a root cause. We have siloed teams, siloed data, siloed tools, and lack of visibility. Also, many leaders have never won an agile transformation. It's probably something that you do once or twice in your lifetime. And although organizations become agile, they don't focus enough on improving flow. And how you get faster time to market is by eliminating bottlenecks, handoffs, and delays. It's not enough to just go faster. You also need to align strategy and execution. The other thing is that the project model inhibits agility. So why do projects inhibit agility? Well, the project model is not optimized for value and flow. And there's a really great quote here by Mary and Tom Hoppendick. They say it would be much better to assign work to established teams than to reconstitute teams around projects. So every time we do a project, we form temporary teams to the work and then we disband those teams. This also leads to a focus on resource utilization than on faster throughput, meaning that because people are typically multiplexed on several projects at the same time, we are putting John 30% on one project, Susan 20% on another project, 40% on another project, and so on. And the focus is on utilizing our resources 100% over faster value flow. Another thing that the project model does is that it fully funds initiatives before we've actually proven that we can achieve those benefits. We need to take a different tent, such as doing incremental funding of large initiatives. In order to create a budget for projects, we have to 
get it from multiple siloed cost centers. And often it can take several weeks to several months to get a project started and funded. One of the things in which projects get funded by is business cases. These business cases are overly, often overly detailed and they're based upon speculative lagging return on investment forecast. Projects are also constrained by the iron triangle. And typically what happens is that time gets fixed, scope fixed, gets fixed, and costs get fixed. Even though that's not supposed to way it work, that's what most happens. Phase gates also create delays and they increase risk and they make it very difficult to do agile delivery where we work in iterations instead of phases. The other core reason is that the development and business teams are siloed from each other. And silos cause uh, collaboration and sharing goals, priorities, rewards, and incentives to be difficult. And even worse, for value to get from ideation all the way through delivery, it's gonna go through a complicated maze of silo, silos until it finally reaches the customers. So let's look at some of the goals of the business. Increase revenue, accelerate innovation, improve time to market, reducing cost and protecting digital assets and access. The development goals are typically focused on more technical things, such as reducing defect rates and technical debt and, uh, and creating outputs such as high priority features, uh, preventing system outages, decreasing release times and improving cyber security. Since the two groups are not in an alignment, we have significant challenges, such as the business and the technology groups are siloed. There's bottlenecks, there's handoffs between the business and the technical teams. And typically the business and the technical teams don't use the same tooling and therefore you have disconnected data. There are different sources of truth and different focuses on that data. This results in limited alignment and visibility into business goals. Or the actual outputs that we're creating, such as features, are those actually resulting in better business outcomes? Or have we just become a feature factory where we're delivering lots of features without even knowing if they're moving the needle in the business whatsoever? Often, we are releasing things into production that are not a high enough quality or they don't have good enough user experience. The other big thing that I'm seeing today is the lack of security. We're not protecting the applications that we're bringing to market. And there has been a lot of cyber attacks that you may have seen on the news across the, the world. In the United States, the Colonial Pipeline, oil pipeline got attacked and it shut down oil, oil uh, distribution on the entire East Coast. That was a very significant economic event, as well as inconveniencing people who were waiting to get gas at the pump. So Gartner says that by 2023, 70% of organizations will use value stream management to improve flow in the DevOps pipeline which leads to faster delivery of customer value. Now, every year, Digital AI publishes a study on the state of Agile. And what you're seeing here is that our metrics show that companies are expanding their implementation of value streams. They're implementing it or not expanding. They're currently implementing it or they're planning to implement. If you add those four categories up, that's 55%. So is it possible that in two years that most organizations will use value stream management that we get to that 70%? I think that's very realistic. So what is value stream management? Value stream management is a set of lean principles and practices 
that optimize people, process, and technology to improve the flow of business value continuously from ideation to customer delivery. And this allows us to measure outcomes as well as outputs to improve our enterprise agility, to improve our value delivery where our focus is on delivering value rather than completing tasks using the project model. And also value stream management is concerned with security and testing as well. So value stream management helps us integrate disparate tools. It helps us track the flow of business value and to help deliver a unified, to actually unify the business and development. We can create and deliver more secure digital experiences because we're not waiting to the very end to ensure that we can secure our apps. We do that incrementally throughout the, uh, the, the project, what were throughout the value stream. The impact of this is that we get from value stream management is we get increased value, we can accelerate innovation, we can significantly improve time to market anywhere from 2x to 10x. It also will help us reduce costs by eliminating waste in the value stream and by uh, continuously testing for uh, security as well as implementing practices that, that protect our apps from the beginning, we can ensure that applications are not hacked by criminal element. The next thing you need to ask yourself is does your enterprise want to be a caterpillar and a butterfly? And what I mean by this is that a caterpillar may achieve business objectives faster and cheaper. But what you really need to do is to go through a metamorphosis or a transformation and truly transform how your enterprise operates. And this is both from the business side as well as the technology side. But what we see today is that these transformations fall short and all you have is a faster caterpillar. So you really wanna be that butterfly. Value stream management also delivers measurable value. We can increase our value by making sure that we can prioritize the investments with the most value. We can remove guesswork by using data and helping us understand if the things that we are releasing to our customers have actually moved the needle. Did these features, did this product, did this MVP, does it show that our customers are getting value? Uh, we can identify bottlenecks with value stream management, and we're gonna discuss value stream mapping in a little while to discuss how we identify bottlenecks and delays and how we can eliminate waste and how we can measure continuously and improve collaborations with real-time metrics. We can also reduce risk by from the evolving landscape. And if we harden our applications up front, such as encrypting our applications so they can't be reverse engineered, which prevents applications from uh, ransomware attacks, we also need to uh, prove compliance and governance throughout the life cycle. And again, not to wait to the end. You can't inspect in security, you can't inspect in quality. Your product, good or bad, is, you know, you'll have what's good or bad in your product at that point, you know, through inspection. Only by building quality and security can you achieve the business results that you want. Again, inspection is too late. So what exactly is a value stream? A value stream is the series of interconnected processes that are required to deliver a product or service to a customer. On this uh, slide here, you're seeing an example of a business value stream. And in fact, this value stream is for 
selling automotive insurance. And the trigger is when somebody requests a particular insurance policy. And then the, a series of processes occur. And the result is that we issue a policy to the customer, which allows us to build the customer and receive income. And the customer is insured and they get an insurance card. Value streams also contain the people, processes, information, and tools that are essential to creating and delivering value. So value streams are not simply the processes, but it's also the people, the information, and tools that are needed to create and deliver value. There are actually two types of value streams. The value stream at the top we just reviewed on the prior slide. And the purpose of business value streams and sometimes they're called operational value streams, such as in the SAFE framework. Alan Ward also calls them operational value streams. I call them business value streams because people often get confused what we mean by operational value streams. Are you talking about operations in the sense of DevOps? Are you talking about uh, some kind of business operations group? So that's why I simply call them business value streams. Examples of these business value streams include insuring a car, marketing and selling a product, providing a loan, and filling a pharmacy order. The development value streams are the people, the tooling, uh, information that's required to create a digital feature product or service that the business value stream uses to provide solutions to customers. So in this case, we have a business value stream for selling car insurance and the development value stream creates the systems and applications that are used by the business value stream and customers to use that particular application. People is an important aspect of value stream management. Silos, or you can call them organizational boundaries, they can increase costs by 25% or more. And that's, they create buffers that slow down time to market and interfere with communication. So what are the three main people practices? That's to organize teams around value streams, create cross-functional agile teams, and organize value streams in portfolios. We'll briefly go through each one of these. Creating cross-functional agile teams means that we have all the people that we need to build a product or service without delays and handoffs. And as you can see here, we have people from the business, developers, testers, People from operations, the people who move code into production are also part of the cross-function team. So we have all the knowledge and skills that we need in order to bring a feature or product to market without those handoffs and delays. The other thing that we want to do is that we want to organize our teams around value streams. So it's not enough just to have cross-functional teams. You want to organize your teams around a product or service. Anywhere that you see a product or service is where you'll find a value stream. And we wanna go from a command and control hierarchical system as shown on, left, on the left, and we want to eventually become a team of agile teams where it operates more like a network instead of a hierarchy. And that allows for the fast, fast flow of information without impediment. Uh, in examples of teams of teams in SAFE or Agile Release Train or in Spotify model, tribes are an example of a team of Agile teams. We also want to optimize teams for flow. Interestingly, in 1967, Melvin Conway wrote an article in Datamation magazine. And he theorized that organizations which design systems 
are constrained to produce designs which are copies of the communication structures of these organizations. So what does that mean? So let's say that I have three different groups who are collaborating together to build a solution. Chances are that we're gonna have three different architectures. We are gonna, we are gonna have three different modules because we're in three different locations. So the architecture of the system is a copy of how we're organized. And this became known as Conway's Law. It is as relevant as it was in 1967 as it is today. A great book that I found is called Team Topologies by Matt Skeleton and Manuel Pace. And they talk about how to organize teams for flow. So what you're seeing on the left is an example of these team topologies. There are two arts here, the auto insurance renewals, renewal policy and, the, and, and a new policy for auto insurance. On the left, you're seeing the actuarial business rules engine. That's an example of a complex team. And they, they consist of specialists who know about a particular domain or have specialized, let's say, mathematical skills. Then we have streamlined teams. And we want the, the team to be able to uh, deliver solutions across that business value stream. We don't want to create another silo and then have people siloed around systems. We want teams to cover an entire flow. So you see there are three flows here a competitor policy takeout flow, new policy for mature drivers, and new policy for young drivers. And each of these value streams have, are aimed at different customer segments, and they have slightly different flows, and they might concentrate on using different types of technology, such as uh, young drivers. So I highly recommend this book and learn about these team topologies. The next important thing is that we, we need to make sure that we're investing our money in the value streams that will bring us the most revenue and customer delight. And this is a great quote from Morris Chang, who is the CEO of Taiwan Semiconductor. And he says, without strategy, execution is aimless. Without execution, strategy is useless. So we need to have both. And one of the ways that we do that is through a discipline called lean portfolio management. And what you're seeing here on this slide is that ABC Insurance is the enterprise. And within this enterprise, we have four different portfolios, home and auto, personal, recreational insurance, and business insurance. So let's take an example. In the home and auto, portfolio, there are five value streams, auto, motorcycle, condo, home, and rentals. And when we budget people to develop solutions for the home and auto portfolio, we are going to budget each one of these value streams. And we're going to base that budget uh, on what we think where we'll get the most return on our investment. So it's very important to organize your value streams in portfolios. It also allows us to compare like things, just like in your investment portfolio for your personal investments, perhaps for your 401k. You want to have your portfolio group things together so you can see how am I doing on, let's say, uh, large caps versus small caps versus bonds, et cetera. What is the investment mix? And that's what lean portfolio management helps us to do, is to make sure that we have a strategy and that our strategy has funded the value streams in the level that they need, as well as to help with prioritization and governance and to make things as lightweight as, as possible. Process is very important too. Every organization has process. The thing is how efficient is your process is what's important. So there are three main areas of process that we should be looking at for value stream management. Applying the five principles of lean, 
Embracing the Seven Principles of Lean Software Development from Mary and Tom Poppendick, and Improving Flow with Value Stream Mapping, not to be confused with Value Stream Management. So the five principles of Lean are identifying value, mapping the value stream, creating flow, establishing core, and seeking perfection. And before you can identify value, you have to define what value means. Well, here's a good starting definition. Value is simply what your customer is willing to pay for your product or service. If you're in a nonprofit, is how much value are you providing to, perhaps if you're in government, to your citizens, as an example. And we will cover the rest, but they're pretty self-explanatory. You can read those on your own time. The next thing is to limit, uh, to embrace the seven principles of lean software development. So Mary and Tom Poppendick are really uh, an important force in taking uh, lean principles and applying them to software development. And these seven principles are absolutely essential to be able to move with speed and agility, eliminating waste, building quality in, building security in, uh, where that we're always creating knowledge and that we can gain knowledge quickly, that we can defer commitment on decisions which will have a long lasting effect, but they're difficult to reverse. Delivering fast is important, not only from a time to market perspective, but we wanna get feedback to make sure that we're on the right track. So it's very important to deliver fast and get that feedback. And in order to do uh, our work well, we need to respect people. After all, people do all the work in developing these systems. And another important thing is that we need to use systems thinking so that when we optimize things, we're optimizing the whole, not just the parts. Otherwise, we'll end up uh, locally optimizing. So where we may make things better for one team, but for a team of agile teams, we actually may make things worse, or we may make things worse for the enterprise itself. The next thing we want to do is improve flow with value stream mapping. And what you're seeing here at the top are the steps for doing value stream mapping. And typically it takes about two to three days to map a single value stream. However, there's usually preparation that takes about three to four weeks before you begin mapping, such as identifying the value stream that you're gonna start with, setting a date as a forcing function to begin the value stream mapping, uh, getting a meeting room and identifying a team that will do the value stream mapping. Then you map the current state. Then you, from there, you identify what are the problems that we're seeing in that value stream. And from there, we can design a better future state. And then from the ideas that we come up with for that better future state, we can create backlog items and put them in a, in a development improvement plan. And finally, to start executing on that improvement plan. So where did value stream mapping come from? Well, it also came from lean manufacturing. In fact, it was part of the Toyota production system. In the Toyota production system, they called it materials and information flow mapping. Uh, Mike Wather and John Shook uh, were the first people to use the term value stream mapping. And it's essentially the same thing as materials and information flow mapping. They just codified it in a book called Learning to See. So here's the power of value stream management. When we did our current value stream mapping, there were 20 steps. It took nine weeks to go from the beginning of the process, from request to customer delivery. There were a lot of inconsistencies as we're executing the process. There was a lot of lost time in rework, uh, bottlenecks, handoffs, uh, and delays, confusion, misalignment, and late validation, waiting to the very end to inspect quality or to inspect security. And remember, 
You cannot inspect in quality or security. You must build it in as part of the process. But look what happened after we did the mapping. After we uh, defined what the better future states, we got it down from 20 steps to eight steps. We went from nine weeks to one week, a 9x improvement. We have a process which can be followed, and it's a repeatable process. We can do things, identify things which can be done in, in parallel, and we can get early and continuous feedback. When we do value stream mapping, it also provides a good business case for your digital transformation. In this case, we're showing that by doing this value stream mapping, we could take the current process from 106 days down to 20 days, and the wait time in between steps went from 83 days to three days. Those are huge improvements, and you can take that improvement and then quantify those numbers into cost, and you can have a very easy way to quantify the benefits of doing your digital transformation, which isn't only including the process, but it's also changing how you organize people as well as the tools that you use to achieve this. So on this slide discusses how you select the first value stream. And often the first value stream to target for improvement is one that lies at the intersection of these four factors. Strong leadership support, a highly visible value stream, meaning that there is a clear and tangible product or solution. Something that the company sells directly or values highly. Uh, another good criteria is their existing agile teams in that value stream. It will be much easier for them to get started if the teams are already familiar with Agile frameworks. And then finally, is there a significant challenge or opportunity that you can prove out that value stream management makes sense for your organization? Technology is another important aspect of value stream management. In fact, a value stream management platform will offer you end-to-end -end oversight from left to right of the DevOps pipeline. And when I say left to right, that starts with planning the initiative, the business case, ideating all the way through until when the solution is delivered to the customer. And this technology is also used to orchestrate the software lifecycle, and it should offer intelligence, meaning that we can look at our numbers and use machine learning to predict insights using artificial intelligence and machine learning. And this gives a whole new meaning of learning to see in the value stream. Because a technology value stream, you can't see what's happening like you can on the factory floor. Go, go on top of the catwalk and look down to see where there are bottlenecks in your manufacturing process. Software development is not like that. People are sitting in front of computers at their desk or at home doing their uh, development of the product. And you, you just, it's, it's not visible to you. So we want to make it visible. So a value stream management platform helps make visible the entire process from left to right. Again, it helps us with our software lifecycle orchestration because you have you got to build the solution. You need to release and deploy the solution. You need to protect your application, do continuous testing, and finally monitor and operate and monitor the solution. Imagine if you're able to, from your, uh, your service management tools, such as ServiceNow or Remedy, uh, many other great tools out there, and identify which of the uh, tickets, which tickets are generating the, the most problems. So maybe it's a security problem with, with single sign-on where people can't log in. Uh, maybe it's some other piece of, of code that you just implemented in production and it just caused thousands of cases. Well, the AI machine learning 
can show you which are the most, which are the topics that are causing the most number of problems. Often 20% of the issues cause 80% of the problems. So this is this next slide just shows the various tooling that we just described. So you want to have enterprise agile planning, continuous testing and improvement, DevOps for release and deploy, and then operations and business agility, such as operate and monitoring. And then you see at the top, we have a intelligent value stream management platform that has a unified data model and that applies artificial intelligence and machine learning to it. We also need to have security, governance, audit and compliance process controls. And we need to automate those things as much as possible so that we can easily repeat those tests each and every iteration so we're not waiting to the very end to do that. It's very important that we focus on outcomes over outputs. Now, out outputs are important. That's what the development teams do to accomplish a goal. They develop features, they may conduct a product demo, deploying code to production. But in order to achieve our business outcomes, we need to produce one or more outputs. But not all outputs provide meaningful business outcomes. So the outcomes are something that we achieve, a goal that we achieve through measurable results. An example of business outcomes include increased customer satisfaction, increased revenue, reduced cost, increased process efficiency, cultural change, and improved quality. So you want to first determine the outcomes, the business outcomes that you want to achieve, then to find the outputs that will help get you there. And then you wanna measure both the outputs and the outcomes. We measure the outputs to use as a proxy to see if we're achieving our outcomes. Another important aspect is to steer with objectives and key results or OKRs, key performance indicators, KPIs, and metrics. And what you're seeing on this slide are different categories of metrics that enable you to focus on both outputs and outcomes. And with artificial intelligence and machine learning, we can also correlate the outputs with our outcomes. Is the work that we're doing actually achieving the business outcomes? We put a feature in production. Is anyone using it? Are customers satisfied with that feature that we've moved to into production? Is it satisfying your needs? Well, we can bring in Pendo data as an example and then measure how well that feature is doing based upon customer input. Enterprises that simply focus on output metrics, they're not seeing a big picture. And the big picture is to ensure that we're delivering value to our customers and to the business. The next thing we're seeing here is the value stream management adoption roadmap. So it shows you how to get started in value stream management from training leaders all the way to mapping the value stream to organizing teams around value, to filling value stream management roles, to selecting metrics all the way through continuous improvement in the value stream. And after we've implemented one value stream, then you'll see there's a repeating loop that happens and we'll map the next value stream and repeat this process. If you'd like to learn more, please download my new free ebook from the Digital AI homepage. And it's called Value Stream Management for the Digital Age. Accelerating Value Discovery and Delivery from Digital Transformation. Thanks very much for attending my presentation, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.